welcome to the first Mountain Network Series webinar. I've just been told we have an audience of over 180 people from 45 countries, so a very warm welcome uh, to you all. Um, we have a really interesting uh, topic to kickstart this series, which is all about the issue of porters around the world. The UIAA is establishing a mountain worker initiative, which aims to establish guidelines for ethical trekking and mountaineering practices worldwide, with a focus on the lives on mountain workers. This will cover issues such as food, pay, and insurance, among others. The initiative will kick off with a collaboration with both the, the Nepal uh, Mountaineering Association and the Trekking Agencies Association of Nepal. But what has inspired uh, this initiative is the film that we're all about to watch, which gives a unique insight into the lives of Nepalese porters. It's called The Porter, The Untold Story at Everest. And we are very pleased to welcome Nathaniel Menninger, the creator of the film, to the panel today. There will be a chance to talk to Nathaniel after the film and ask some questions, as well as other members of the panel who between them bring together an enormous amount of experience and knowledge on all the issues that this film raises. So to introduce uh, the panel, I'd like to do that now. We have Peter Farkas, the president of the Mountaineering Commission. We also have Steve Long, who is uh, the training panel president. Greg Mosley, who is the uh, president of the Mountain Club of South Africa and also a member of the UIAA Management Committee. Uh, Kul Gurung, the general secretary of the Nepal Mountaineering Association. Sarita Lama, uh, General Secretary of the Trekking Agencies Association of Nepal. And of course, we have Nathaniel Meninger, whose film we're about to watch. So very warm welcome to all our audience and to all our panelists. And a reminder uh, not to go away at the end of the film because we're gonna have a 20 minute uh, Q&A um, session. But before uh, the film starts, I'd like to hand over to the UIAA's president, uh, Peter Muir to say a few introductory words. Peter. Hello, everyone. Uh, let me welcome you to this first of the Mountain Work uh, series. Um, I'm lucky enough to have been recently elected the president of the UIAA, and uh, I'm very pleased with this initiative to get started. Um, just a quick background for those of you who don't know, the UIAA uh, is the International Association of uh, Mountaineering, the National Federations of Countries. It was founded in 1932. It has 90 members representing 67 countries around the world from all six co continents. The primary mission of the UIAA is to promote the growth and protection of mountaineering and climbing worldwide, working with its national federations on global uh, issues of global importance. Um, if you have the chance, and I encourage you to do that, to look at some of the various social media and the website of the UIAA, you will find there a variety of, um, of projects, uh, our commissions and other, other things. You'll see certain themes. One of those themes is, I think maybe the most important theme is the freedom of mountaineering that we encourage. Um, but you'll also see themes that represent what I call the responsibilities to exercise that freedom, uh, our responsibilities for looking after the environment through our mountaineering, for, through our Mountain Protection Commission, our promotion of uh, responsibility for our partners and other climbers and trekkers through our medical and safety commissions um, and, and other things. And I'll just say quickly that um, we're also, one of the key responsibilities to have is to those people that we find in the, in the areas uh, where we climb, and in particular, those people who support us through their mountain work in enjoying our sport as we do. So um, I encourage you to in, enjoy the movie and uh, the question and answer afterwards. Um, it's difficult, I think, not impossible, but difficult to rise to the level of empathy that Nathaniel brings through his film. Um, but you'll understand it uh, better from seeing that perspective. And uh, I thank him for his contributions and I hope you enjoy the program. There'll be other programs. Tarkin will talk about that later and keep joining us and help where you can. Thanks very much. Thank you, Peter. Um, so uh, we're now gonna watch the film. It's just under um, an hour long. Um, and afterwards, um, as Peter mentioned, there'll be 20 minutes for um, a Q and A session with the panelists. 
And um, there is, of course, a chance to ask a question yourself, um, either on, you know, if you're watching on YouTube on the comments or through the, the Q&A the Q uh, function, and I'll try and ask um, as many uh, questions as I can. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's watch the, the movie. You can see the local quarter, they will carry about 100 kilos. 100 kilos. But the who, work, who is working with the tourist uh, is not allowed to carry above 25 kilos. Normally, the normal quarter will get salary in the trekking, mm -hmm. it's uh, 1500 to 2000. Okay, so let's say 1500, it's $15 a day. $15 a day, yeah. When you reach in the Lukla, you just added that day also, right? Yeah. <clears throat> but most of the porter, they don't go from the Kathmandu. First no, day, no, they yeah. don't. And they, they do multiple trips in a row. Yeah, they have a Lukla base. Yeah. They do Lukla to Lukla. And uh, each take um, the tips and the allowance are very compulsory. to yeah. giving them at the end. So they get tips too? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, Not okay. tips is here. Tips is extra. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, and don't think that. Even that sometimes they're getting the tips like more than 200 300 $400 also. Really? Yeah, from our company, tips is compulsory. Oh, that okay. is the just salary. Oh, ooh. Okay, okay that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. That's good news. And then no shower, no shower sold. Oh, okay. uh, so there is no shower uh, in the poor house. No. What? Just one shirt, one fleece, and one jacket. Jacket. Just one up top. I'll be so smelly. That's not good, but. <laughs> Otto, don't drink uh, Coca Cola. What do you do then? Why not? <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> they do, but. Yeah, they do. No, no, no. I... Americans, we need Coke. Uh, they take uh, 500 rupees for one Coca Cola. Oh, that's expensive. I ain't drinking that's Coke. That's why Potter <laughs> they don't. Potter drink water. I'm gonna only <laughs> drink water. There's no Coke. This is my last Coke. You wanna drink normal water or water with the uh, waterproof because it's chocolate? What you I don't know. Porter can keep you in Porter, they can, they can drink it straight from the tap. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. You do that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Screw it. Most of the day we do that from tap. Go from tap. If I get sick, then what do you do? Then I'll keep going. <laughs> It'll be all right. <laughs> 
It's a first meal here. No. I'm already struggling. It's, struggling. Uh, I, I, it's not even spicy. I'm crying. I don't even really know how to eat it. You have to squish it together. You know, eat with your right hand. It's gross. You wipe your butt with your left. So you don't eat it with your left hand. You shake hands with your right hand, not your left. Inside. It's gonna be a long month. A very long month. Hunter, 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 Hunter. Siapa kau ni? Oh, kau ni. Ah, yo, naya duit tu? Naya, naya. Naya duit tu. Ada yang duit tu? Ada yang apa? Ada yang gaya. Ah, kun. Uyo. Hehe. Ada tinta. Ah, tinta. Bor meri yo. Ah. Ya. Ada apa? Ada ni apa tu? Ya gasal dia bandar, sah bandar mana tu kuda rawa dalam kolong kolong mana sah? Ya ya sah dia ruh ya. Ya, kau tapai kau garho? Oh, launch ho? Hajar? Launch ho? Launch na, launch sih na. Tapi tapai dia bandar kau sih tapai sangka launch sah? Aba bandar mana pas? Aba bandar mana pas? Hmm, ramu. Kah? Pilih gar batio? Bukan mana batio? Aba bandar ni bakar bandar kau. Toilet ruh bandar kau sih na. Hmm, pakai jangan pas. तारे यो बातों मंते मंता तारे को बातों यो बातों रामलो चा यो यो बातों जिन आमर थोड़ूं चीज़ पकड़े जाने बातों कौन है ये कौन Western toilet, Western toilet, huh? Nepal, Nepal toilet, huh? Cha, cha, Nepal toilet, cha. Huh? Ipa teri, ipa, ipa teri perisa. Matri Nepal toilet. Huh, 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 Let's 
कि सत्यत हो बादुन जिर सबरी संग संबंधार मिलन जीवन साथी को खेलवाट नगरने इक्यो आमुले चा बादुन जिर संग नाई गाटो हैं हीरा भुर्दीना नेपाली गई ขอให้ขอนี้แค่รักเธอสูงข้างละทุ่งเมงาลาเธอรู้ขอให้เธอสูงข้างละทุ่งเมงาลาเธอรู้ขอให้เธอสูงข้างละทุ่งเมงาล
You know you've made it to Lupa. You see Baskin Robbins. Now the real work begins. Let's see if my training paid off tomorrow. I'll buy my Namla. Clean my clothes. And the day after that, which I have no idea what the actual day it is. I go back out into the into the world as an official porter. Why are you so? Yo pati feri na ramro basno. Sukra, Sukra, Ranta Bay? No, 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 I'm a sicker. 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 I'm a who number? 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 I'm no experiment. I got a biscuit. I think <laughs> pretty pumped. I'm pretty nervous too for tomorrow as well. When I gotta carry other people's stuff. I'm like, uh, it's gonna be cold. I don't really have clothes. But I'm just complaining. I signed up for this. Yeah, 
मेरे जीवन तमंग वर्षों पहले से पुगो मेरे जो सुलखुम लुकिंग गैस वार्नु सब वर्षे अन्य परिवार मेरे गांव में से ऐसे हम जो सीजन सीजन मार्केट में आऊँ सु अन्य आउट सीजन में से अपने घर में की टिक्सन करने खाने तेल अन्य पोटर गाड़ी को तो बहुत महीने से जमा जमी बारह तेरह वर्षे बो पोटर गाड़ी को
get to sleep here. You see that little shed down there? That's where I sleep. Japuni Bosna Alikati Osubidana Imza Kinaki Porter Lai Early Dristipone or Coyunza. I'm not sure if you're a good person. I'm not sure if you're a
खाना को जिस अलग लगाते जब हम एक रात दिन बिता रहे हैं ना नौ दस हजार सीधे सो तेरी सीधे सो अन्य नहीं तो तेरा सौ रुपए ले एक रात दिन को टेक मा चौदह हजार तीन सौ बैठ सा चार हजार तीन सौ बार सा अन्य तेरे घर में लंबे परिश्रम भी ऐसे करने पड़े तो तेरे देरे काम हो Tis food, ini ada berbagai tu kurang tis food dahinas. Kuning leh dua ajar dinsa, kuning leh panas leh dinsa, kuning leh ajar berdinsa. Mana kuning leh dua ajar, dinsa dalam semua dinsa mana kuning leh. Mana kuning leh panas leh dinsa Nepal panas leh. Ani, amru tak kira ni. Cili bayar ni tu tu.
हमें तो अब खास यो अब बरसों में बीच चुटी हो इस अक्टूबर का इस दिन सीजन में ओ पांच सौ पांच सौ हम लोग दो तीन दिन रेस करने अन्य और कुछ टीप करने अब तत्काल पाऊं सकते हैं ना अरुणी साड़ी पाए अपने साड़ी पालक टीप करने पड़े हो हमें पांच पांच महीना छह महीना काम कर चुके छह महीना हमें बॉस से रखा है तब एक बार से पूर्ण हुआ चौबीस चौबीस तब भाई माँ माँ जे देरे पुगे साथ ही बार से आप पोटर बारे को पोटर बारे को पोटर बारे को बीस बार से पुगे बीस बार से चालीस बार से पुगे नहीं माँ बीस बार से हम माँ यो मेरा पहले आप तो और अच्छा क्यों हाँ देरे से कार से पांच महीना माँ रामरे गुरु पर पारे वाले एक एक डेढ़ लाख कमाने चाहते हैं ना रामरे ये अब गुरु पारे वाले पचास हजार चालीस हजार पांच महीने में जो आरुको आरुको महीने में क्या करने आरुको महीने में अब इस टक काम करने किसान करने किसान विशेष हमरे उन्हें किसान हो ये बिस्किम बिस्किम चटने को सामान रखते हो अन्य पुरेर फर्ती है तर आज तो भाई को आफ्टे हो है ना क्रेज़ हो पैसा हूँ जा रामायण लो तो अब पोटर गर्दा गर्दा अब अलग अति साथी भाई हर संगा अब बेड गर्द करने या अलग अति एन्जॉय करने तेज में खुशी होने वाला है पोटर वाला बिचारों जब हम लोग सेंटीप्लेन पार्टी होने लगी, बात समझ नहीं लगी था। ओ, पैसा। हाँ, जीते हो, तब आइए बोलते हैं। जीते हो? हाँ। बिजार बाकी। जेस, जेस, काम जेस, काम जेस, थमोर जेस, जेस। सीएम पार्टी। Alright, so we're on day. Oh no, day it is, but we're getting acclimatized. You see the routine. I always take out backup socks because I'm allowed to have two pairs of socks. I use my one for hiking, my other for doing this. Otherwise, no, no, it's a mental game. It's a mental game. Can we last mentally? Probably. We have to. Oh. We're here sleeping in the border house. I refuse to take two blankets because in the season you only get one blanket. So I'm going to sleep with one blanket. My socks. <laughs> and that's it. We're just here sleeping on the floor with the boys. Got the boys here. Got the boys here. Got the boys here. <laughs> that's nice. Alright, we'll talk back to you later. So, today we're bumping up to 40 kilos. I'm not gonna lie, I feel terrible. My head's already pounding. I don't know why, but we're going to act like we're feeling great, but today's going to suck.
ऊ पोटर को पोटर में कोई रहें उसे के चाहे हो जीवन परिवर्तन करना चाहिए उसे भविष्य में गए के संघर्ष कर बिराम भोटर ने ना बोक्न पर्ने हो पोटर भी मं हो भारी बोक्ने बस्ने सुत्ने मत हो कि छोर छोरी लाई तो अब स्कूल में पढ़ाऊ डक्टर बना इंजीनियर पढ़ाऊ तर यहाँ हम गरीबी को कारण नेपाल कहीं ज्यादा छचअप बाहर को रन तीन मेरे फिर लंगड़ी से बाहर को रन I don't know. I'm mean, I'm sleeping. We're gonna try and put three on top of this bunk bed. Yeah. Bunk bed. 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 Good night. Hopefully, we don't break this bed and fall through and die or kill them. Or freeze to death. We'll see. Thanks, DD, for us. That's DD. Alright, we'll, we'll see ya. It's the morning of our. Um, ninth day, so it's the first day we're heading back down the mountains, and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting out of here. Last night, at one point, I didn't even have a blanket. Um, it wasn't warm, um, and uh, <coughs> I'm just ready. I'm ready to go home. आज तो एक जन मन सीते सुरी यहाँ मतलब जा पास में बीराम भरे छोड़ दिए सा अन्य आरु ग्रुप चाहिए उधर फर्क है सा 
अनि एकले आएछ त उसको त कुराहरु सब पिल्सेर हामीले उसमा भेटेको थियो एकले गाउँको मान्छे छैन भने एकले छ र भने छोड दिन्छ त्यसरी अनि त्यो त्यतै गायब हुन्छ नि त्यही मर्छ त्यो त कोले हेर्ने हेलिपट गर्न मान्छे हुँदैन अनि त्यस्तो पनि हुन सक्छ अनि Today's my last day. One thing, I hate downhill. Two, I'm happy it's my last day. Yo, Bari Pale the Bogu Mele, Luk the Bato Nante, Duta, Simil Kupaski, Duta Simil Kubora, the Tintilia. Masai Gizida, Mele Pansam in a Bogu.
स्टार गर्छ तर म गर्छु आउनुस् म उठ्न आउँदैन ओ ओ फोटो हो आराम गर्छु आराम गर्छु आराम गर्छु आराम गर्छु पोटर छैन भने कामै लागेन यो ट्रेकिङ एरियामा कामै छैन अब टुरिस्टले बोक्न सक्दैन गाइडले बोक्ने कुरो भएन मेन कुरो त पोटर छैन भने कामै छैन
So a reminder that a question and answer session will follow after the credits. They last for about two minutes, so you've got time to uh, grab a quick drink um, and we'll begin our panel session um, in a couple of minutes. So I hope um, you all enjoyed that amazing film. Um, I think we can all uh, congratulate Nathaniel on uh, shining the light on Porter's experience. So we're now gonna begin a 20 minute um, session for um, questions and uh, answers with the panel. And I'd like to introduce all our uh, panelists again, um, in case you missed that at the start. So we have uh, Peter Farkas, who is a president of the Mountaineering Commission. Um, Steve Long is here, who is a training panel president. Greg Mosley, who is president of the Mountain Club of South Africa and also a member of the UIAA's uh, management committee. Um, from Nepal, we've got both uh, Kul uh, Gurung, who's general secretary of the Nepal Mountaineering Association, and Sarita Lama, who's general secretary of the Trekking Agencies Association of Nepal. And of course, we have uh, Nathaniel Menninger, who uh, is the star and creator of that film. And uh, we will go one by one through the panelists. And I thought maybe we'll kick off with, um, with you, Nathaniel. And uh, you, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the background to this film. What was the, um, the inspiration to make it? Yeah, first of all, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And it's always weird watching your own movie. I had to look away for most of that because it's just a little too weird for me. But the inspiration for that film <clears throat> I had been doing adventures kind of like this for years and I never had proof. I was just a writer. So I really wanted video proof and uh, Everest happened to pop up on my radar. You know, it has the big name appeal. So I figured it could kickstart my career. And then I'd been a tourist there and then I'd been a guide uh, for foreign students. And I would only glimpsed a fraction of what, uh, mountain workers live through you know i'd seen where they sleep and i'd seen a bit of where they eat and in my logic it was like all right you know this is a, at the time when a lot of everest controversies and, and the crowds were coming out and and uh i wanted to expose maybe they're not making as much but moreover i just wanted to show like uh you know this is a really hard job and these guys are strong you know <laughs> and i was an athlete so that's what i wanted to do but there was a big portion of me wanting to become famous going into this that's the truth. What were the, what would you say the main things that you, you took away? What are the things perhaps most surprising or, or that would be shocking um, to, to trekkers that, that we don't see, that we don't know? Yeah, well, this, this kind of information took me a while to digest. You know, it, it didn't just all hit at once. Um, but over time, I think the thing that really, really grind, grounded my gears was the fact that at one point we were getting paid $15 an hour and we were spending over 20 and I'm not so much uh, wanting to help others kind of guy I come from America. We're very business oriented and that just didn't compute in my brain, how you could be spending more than you earn in a day. And that became a driving force for everything that followed. It looked incredibly tough carrying those loads. I mean, I don't even mean just a hundred kilogram load, but even the lighter loads. Can you give an, an idea of the, the strain that places on the body, not just for yourself, but 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 were you aware anecdotally of, of injuries that the porters experience carrying these loads? 
Yeah, I mean, I think anyone from Nepal can probably speak better to this. Um, I'm just, you know, I'm just a foreigner. I only did one expedition, 11 days, 12 days. So what I experienced is what someone who literally has, you know, almost no training experiences and who hasn't grown up there eating the diet. Uh, it was, uh, you know, it, it hurts, I'm not gonna lie, it hurts, but I learned the technique and got better um, by that last stinge of carrying 100 kilos. I kind of removed my brain. So um, I, I don't really remember much feeling. I remember it was just pain everywhere. And I think even other porters experience a degree of that, but they are more accustomed to it. I did see, you know, it's kind of like in America, we have the NFL. And if you get injured, you don't, you don't play and you don't get paid. And I did see other porters, other workers who had little injuries who had fallen because there were snow days and they would wrap it up or they would kind of have to brush it under, you know, brush it under the bed and, and act like nothing's wrong and continue on because if you don't work, you don't get paid. So uh, there are injuries. It's an athletic endeavor and it requires, you know, when you're sleeping on the floor and you're not eating a, a super large amount of food and you're carrying such heavy loads, it's going to put a strain. There's going to be some mishaps, but, but most people carry through. Your film you has to. been um, really successful. I think when I last checked, it had about 600,000 views on, on, on YouTube. Um, how do you feel about the response and, and, and where do you plan to go next with it? Yeah. I mean, being selfish, obviously I want like millions and millions of people to see it, but I think the real direction is, you know, almost becoming a tool for this MWI, this mountain worker initiative being a tool. I mean, it's strange that it has me. It's selfish. I'll admit um, it helps me but at the same time. It can educate people as to what is really going on. And Everest is just one mountain, but it is kind of the leader of, of the entire trekking and mountaineering world. So what happens there is if not worse at other mountains. And so I think this, this film can at least help provide some insights to what's going on and provide a tool for the MWI as to, you know, educate everyone listening as to like what we're actually trying to solve. No, yeah. Nathaniel, um, thank you. Um, that's yeah. brilliant. I think we're going to, we're going to go now to um, Peter Farkas, who, um, uh, who can tell us a little bit about why perhaps um, the Mountaineering Commission wanted to get involved in this project, um, drafting guidelines for the Mountain Worker Initiative. Peter, are, are you there? Yes, thank you. Well, uh, I think it has to be done. After watching this movie, I mean, you cannot help feeling touched and uh, feeling uh, that you have to do something. And I think within UIA, when the commission, the seven commissions of UIAA are all designated for specific tasks, this is this task is most fitting to the mountaineering commission. You know, we have we have a legal experts working group and so on. So this is the mountaineering commission which can tackle these so-called odd projects apart from the usual task of uh, preparing training and training standards and tailoring qualifications. And and who are um, you know the experts involved in this project and um, why did you choose them? Well, uh, you know, the Mountaineering Commission, you know, the National Federation delegates people to the commission. So, because it's, you know, as I said, it's a very unusual project for us. It's not, not that much mountaineering, it's more legal, it's more about legal stuff. It's more about uh, people's uh, workers' welfare and so on. So I was kind of recruiting this working group from, from the commission. And there was a surprisingly high number of volunteers from four continents. So this gave the worker, you know, we want these guidelines to be generic, to be global. And having a global team to prepare that, you know, from, from, from the US to, to the Czech Republic, to Nepal and so on, you know, I think as credibility to this work. So this was the, this was the reason uh, behind picking those people. Um, these guidelines at the moment, these, these are draft guidelines, aren't they? They're working guidelines. Can yes. you explain um, you know, why that is? Do we already have a, an idea of when there might be um, sort of concrete guidelines? Perhaps you could explain a little bit about the process there. Yes, the process is that what we, are, that we have prepared are generic guidelines, but you know, we are not an authority. We offer these guidelines primarily to the national federations, national mountaineering federations who are members of UIAA. And it will, you know, it will be kind of a starting point for them. They should adopt these guidelines and modify them as needed to fit 
the legal system, the, the traditions, whatever, of their own respective countries. So what we, know, we, can, we, uh, what we want to give them is really an inspiration. And uh, it's also a kind of a checklist to see what are the questions to be addressed when they prepare their own final guidelines. But we cannot create a one size fits all solution because in all countries where uh, the porter's welfare is an issue, they have different legal system, different organizational background and so on. So that's, what we, that's why we wanted to prepare something generic, something which should be a good starting point for all these countries. Thank you. We've actually had some messages from around the world and I'd like to read a couple of those out. One is from the um, Mongolian National Climbing Federation. Dear friends, I would like to convey warm greetings from Mongolia to all the participants to this webinar. It's quite an important topic of nowadays where many people, especially young people, are more and more interested in trekking and climbing without the full uh, risk assessment. I do expect an interesting and useful insight into the further development of the trekking industry. So on behalf of the Mongolian National Climbing Federation, I would like to wish you great success in the first UIAA webinar, um, a fruitful and open discussion. And also we've had a message from the Porter Voice uh, Collective. Um, it's a non-profit media organization uh, that advocates human rights of porters in Peru, uh, Nepal, as well as uh, Tanzania. We wish to create partnerships with organizations working on the same mission of creating workforce equity uh, tourism. So um, now it seems like a good uh, opportunity to go over to, to Greg Mosley, who is uh, president of the Mountain Club of um, South Africa. Um, Greg, and um, thank you, Peter. Um, Greg, perhaps you could tell us um, how you feel the guidelines can benefit national federations on a, on a worldwide platform. Greg, you're on mute. You need, just need to un un unmute yourself. Um, uh, it's interesting because the last note from the Port of, Port of Voice is at the site because uh, living as I do on the African continent, there are three mountain ranges in Africa that employ porters for the trekking and climbing industry, notably Kilimanjaro. Mount Kenya and Ruanzori. Consequently, this is an international effort. I myself have climbed extensively in the Andes, so I'm aware of the situation in the Andes with porters and more there, donkeys, arrieros, who, who are mountain workers in, in the true sense. Consequently, while the thrust of, of, of Nate's film has been Nepal, and rightly so, with the size of the industry there and the uh, preponderance of porters <coughs> carrying loads. It is an international thing. It is all over the all over the world, notably in the less developed uh, portions of the world. Consequently, we need to make this an international effort and the guidelines will be generic and can then be adapted for individual countries so that we apply those guidelines within the countries in which we climb and, and trek. Um, on the website, um, it says that we're doing a, you know, a fundraiser, raising money for uh, the Mountain Worker Initiative. Um, can you explain how these funds will be spent, how they'll benefit um, mountain workers directly? Indeed, because um, my day job, as it were, uh, is in the mining industry, which might seem a bit of a a non sequitur for a climber working in the mining industry, but we, we have in the mining industry something called ESG investing. Now, ESG investing is environment, social, and governance. Consequently, uh, this fits very well with what we're trying to do, in as much as the environmental aspects are, are obvious to everyone, uh, with the number of people um, trekking and climbing in Nepal, notably on Mount Everest, and also on Kilimanjaro here in Africa, where believe it or not, in the last full year prior to COVID-19, uh, 80,000 people went up Kilimanjaro, 80,000, of which 30,000 were clients and 50,000 were mountain workers. Consequently, there's a real need to look at the environmental side. The social side is obvious. Nature's emphasize that really well, I think, in this movie, regardless of some of the um, 
the comments coming in on the chat line. Uh, and governance is the important part when we look at the funding, because within the UIAA, we will any any money that comes in to fund this mountain workers initiative uh, will be very carefully ring fenced. None of it will be used for admin and um, stuff that gets done by some charities. I'm afraid to say where only a portion of the money reaches the reaches the people it should be reaching. We will ensure transparency and the fact that the money will be properly spent for what it is in, intended for. And Greg, I think we're going to have to. I think we're going to have to move on there. Yeah, go for it. I think that answers that the works. question. So um, thank you. We may get a chance to come back to you in, if we have other questions. But I would like to move on to to Steve Long. Um, so Steve is a mountain guide. Um, and he leads the, uh, the, the the training panel of the UIA. So perhaps you, Steve, could tell us a bit more about the guidelines um, and what their benefits uh, would be for mountain workers. Uh, yes, well, uh, as you say, uh, I've, I've worked for many years as, as a, a mountain guide and um, it's a very privileged existence. Um, uh, and I was, because I grew up in the Western world, I was fortunate to not have to work my way um, up, up a ladder, which starts with carrying massive loads uh, or, uh, and or cooking. Quite often people you know, be, do both. Um, and over the years, I, I, I love my mountaineering and I love guiding, but um, uh, I found that I particularly enjoy passing on skills to, um, to younger uh, instructors and guides uh, as they set off in their careers. And um, one of the places we've worked with a lot was Nepal. Um, and on on our courses, we always have a real trek um, to you know to keep things real for training and assessment. Uh, and it was noticeable how the um, the support crew, you know, the the porters and the, the cooks, how hard they worked. Even in winter, uh, we crossed uh, a, a, a saddle uh, called the Gangela, which was uh, absolutely bitter cold. And these guys were up there, you know, in their training shoes in the snow with massive loads, uh, and. It really uh, brought home to me um, how hard they work. And Nate's film is, you know, does a fantastic job of, of showing, uh, bringing that home and showing people um, how hard that work is. Now, you, you, these people have no plan B. You know, if you're injured, no income. Um, so they need, they need training so that they can see um, how to um, uh, sustain a, a sort of long-term health to have some sort of career plan, you know, what's your ex exit strategy? Are you going to carry massive loads, 100 kilos or whatever when you're in your 60s? I don't think so. Uh, so uh, people need to know, you know, what they can do, where they can go. And so um, I think we, I would like to see us extending our training. We, we, we've always trained guides and leaders uh, and also provide training to, to the other folks, you know, so they can work their way through these ladders and, and better protect themselves and the environment they work in. So... That's in a nutshell. Brilliant. Um, Steve, we'll probably have to leave it there because we've only got a, a short time, but thanks for that little uh, overview. Um, let's go to Nepal next, to um, Gul Kurung. Um, perhaps you could tell us where you see the potential of these guidelines applying to, to Nepal. Um, <clears throat> the uh, Nepal has uh, uh, guidelines for sure, but uh, Still, the uh, these specific, uh, uh, is, I mean, the more is a bit more uh, is a creative, innovative, and the very practical guidelines uh, definitely do help the expedition operators, trekking operators, and uh, stakeholders as well as the concern authorities, and also what we call the labor union, the tourism worker labor unions. I already have the shared this uh, bit, uh, this draft uh, the guidelines, and everybody very positive. And uh, they, they're just really willing to have uh, it even better. Uh, I'm very sure that uh, you know the guidelines, whichever whatever we have, these experts, uh, the effort will even uh, take us to the next level. Uh, we are very positive on it. Brilliant, thanks, girl. Let's go next to um, Sarita Tan, who is from the um, uh, Trekking and Mountaineering um, Association in Nepal. Um, Sarita, maybe you, you could tell us a little bit about the, the current situation and how, how COVID is affecting um, porters. Okay. Uh, first of all, is a thank Nat to bring in the dark side of the our work. And this is really emotional and touchy also. After this, uh, in COVID, after March 24, we closed down totally in 2020. Afterward, uh, we opened the Nepal 
uh, October 15, 2020. Since then, we have uh, 900 uh, trekkers is arrived in Nepal. That is, I have uh, in the town is giving the trekker uh, who come to the Nepal trekkers. We giving a uh, online visa uh, procedure, helping for that one. Therefore, at the moment, actually, the all the our trekkers, uh, our boys, our Sherpa, our guide, porter, everybody is uh, not getting any uh, work. Not efficient to work and in the first uh, three months actually a uh, lot of uh, trekking guide porter look after by their trekking companies because that time the owner thought is this uh, spring season will be the uh, not getting paid but in the the october our autumn season will be get and everybody is trying to look after each other and then um, we seeing the phase because all over the COVID is going through, all over the world it is locked down and we can see through, we cannot get the business. Then uh, we, as a town, we started the uh, credit card uh, facility for the boys, uh, the trekking boys, not a lot, um, 15,000 per month, but they have to pay back that one. Even in that time, a lot of boys are going to the back in village Therefore, I think a few uh, few hundred uh, guide and porter who are uh, supportive from the uh, trekking company also, they got the, that facilities. And uh, we try to go through the government, but government is, you know, they are taking a long time and there is a, no any, um, uh, any help from the government at the moment. But as a town and government, we have a one fund uh, called the tre uh, Trekking Porter Fund, um, um, Welfare Fund, and we are working through that one. And let's hope uh, this uh, fund will help them to, uh, in the future soon, that, that fund will help them to the little bit uh, uh, comfortable life. And then let's hope uh, after this vaccination, uh, everything going on, we getting a war to the get back in the normal, our lifestyle. But at the moment, um, we don't know what is, um, even we're trying to do uh, for the, like I, I have our own company and I try to look after my boys, but uh, we cannot do every, not easy like you owning yourself and you are uh, spending your daily life and everything. There were a lot of boys are looking for the another job and most of, I think, um, I last time I heard a lot of um, guides are they doing the total services, you know, working in the field, farmhouse. Therefore, uh, now is just actually, if I call the, our uh, trekking uh, guide porter life is just surviving at the moment. Not Sorry, a good. Uh, thank, th thank you. Very, very difficult um, situation, but and thank you for yes. explaining that. Um, I, I, let's hope there's there's hope on the horizon soon. I think I, I read. Today that Nepal is going to open its doors to tourists who've had the vaccination. So let's hope. Yes, that complete. Yeah, complete improves, vaccination. Um, yeah, improves situations. Yeah. We've yeah. had um, a couple, a few questions. We've we've only got a few minutes left, but we had a, a couple of questions in from the audience. So um, there's one to uh, Nate from uh, Martin Jose. Um, how do you feel that your film can change the vision of mountaineers? Um, or or other um, who, who go to the Himalayas or other mountains of the world? Yeah, I don't think it's, uh, thanks for the question, Martin, uh, or Martin. Um, I don't think it's just my film. I think it's probably an initiative like this and everyone else in the field. As the, I've had to come to learn that the world is now shrinking. Like we're just coming closer and closer together. You know, the academics call it globalization. These markets that never really interacted before are now. And so we see that as mountaineers, we have a responsibility, you know, if we're bringing all the money to any location, uh, how that money impacts the economy is part of our responsibility. And this is, you know, this is the age of, this is the age of learning who your actions affect. So um, that's probably where we're going. It's just working together, honestly, realizing we both have a role in the system. Thanks, Nate. We've got a, a question from uh, Lode Beckers um, asking about the, the Sherpa community and how they um, see this um, uh, question and, and, and what they're doing. Are they favorably, uh, favorably um, disposed towards um, porters? And, and Nathaniel, yeah, go for it. If you've got a, uh, any insights there, um, shoot. Otherwise, I'll, I'll throw it to, to Gul Karung. 
Yeah, I think I think let's pass it to Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, cool. Did, cool. Do did you do you want me to repeat the question? Yeah. Would you mind repeat it? Yes. Yeah. So how does how does the Sherpa uh, community um, fit within this? How do they perceive um, Porter's um, rights and their welfare? Well, um, see, um, we have a, yeah, it takes a bit long time, but just to just make sure the, the TAN, as Sarita said, that we issue the one called the TIMS Trekkers Information Management System. The total collected amount from the TIMS, the 10%, the welfare, uh, the 10% of the amount goes to the mountain workers welfare. And also mm -hmm. the, uh, the enemy at the moment, uh, in this pandemic, the, the, uh, we have been the, strongly asking the Nepal government that actually the total royalty from the climbing picks has to, at least the 10% has to go the mountain workers' welfare. It's, it has been very difficult. And as you've been saying, they say that one, you know, I mean, it has, everybody has a very difficult time, especially the mountain workers. And we even asked the Nepal government they actually to contribute. I mean, look after some relief fund, but didn't work. Uh, but there's a lot of reasons and all that one. But this is definitely the time to look after together. Mountain workers are in a big problem at the moment. Um, another question for um, Nate. What are your views on, on forcing uh, trekkers to kind of pay more? How do you, how do you ensure that, that, that um, trekkers tip properly? I think the goal of this initiative is not to force anyone to do anything. I don't think that's going to be productive. I think the goal is to inspire people to do it, inspire people to start meeting ethical standards and inspire people to all together make this industry better. So I think ultimately our goal is to start rewarding those who do. Um, but of course, as Greg mentioned earlier, there's, there's still a lot more work to do in this initiative to build it out, to raise enough money, to really uh, make the guidelines, get national federation guidelines. So there's a lot more work to do, but uh it's definitely the goal is not to force; it's more to inspire, and we want to do that through uh, most likely rewarding. Um, okay, I'm going to have um, one last question. Um, uh, this is from uh, Danius. I hope I've pronounced that properly. Uh, Babylus, are there any risk that intervention can can make us can make the situation even worse? Um, maybe we could put that back to um, Sarita. Maybe you could answer that uh, no, question. I, I, I... No, I don't think there will be any uh, dangerous because if we don't share, if we don't talk and if we don't uh, look through the, what is coming through, uh, we cannot get in the, our um, uh, work will do. Therefore, I don't think because uh, at the moment, like even the, the your second question says, what is the Sherpa community think? I think last these 10 years, the Sherpa community also welcoming the porter. I think in the before when the I, I read and I heard about the when the uh, 50s, 70s, 80s, how to po porter live in the cave, but still we did a lot of things in the making of porter shelters and everything helping through it and more training is co coming through. Therefore, I don't think uh, this sort of things has to come out, then we will find the solution to how to our culture, our work, our business make a better and then we can live happily and travel happily and then our sustainable tourism uh, put the good situation. If everything bad come out, then who will come to the see the uh, Mount Everest base camp or Annapurna base camp? Therefore, I think uh, what is the net is get, go, getting through and UIA coming through and NMA town. We all uh, working for the goodness of the our uh, saving the our mountain tourism and then our mountain people. And even me, if, if I don't have a business, I think I need to find another job. Therefore, I think coming at this sort of uh, uh, words are, I think, more welcome. Sometimes is coming in the first stage will come the more bad uh, feeling, but actually coming the hard work is, I think, end of the day, it will be the brings the goodness to the all of us as a totally for the mountain worker. Thank you, sir. And uh, one, one final comment that we've had from um, uh, Eckhart von Delft, which is, is it just not as simple as, as, as a question as, as making the trekking companies charge their clients more and therefore paying the porters more money? Is, is, that, is it not as simple as that? I, okay, I think that is also I should uh, uh, answer because what is happening, our business is every time is a lot of things is you competition, you know, who, uh, everywhere is who gets 
the chip or you will go the client. Therefore, I think in somewhere in between, uh, we have an unhealthy competition and there is a regulation. Even in the town, we said wages, you have to pay the our porter is this amount of wages, which area you're going. Even in the, if you go to Kanchanjunga area, you have to pay more. There is, we have a lot of uh, um, rules and regulation with the, our union, our everything. Uh, but uh, I think I will welcome all of the uh, trekkers and tourists who willing to pay the good amount of money to go to the, our portal. But what is, you know, I think probably uh, you all know, um, uh, been through and uh, said uh, Nepal is a cheap destination. Therefore, what is the trekkers or tourists feel? Oh, Nepal is cheap. Therefore, you can come and um, live like even cheaper than Bangkok. But uh, mountain life and you when you carry and everything, actually not a cheap, actually expensive. Therefore, I think now is our uh, business model, our way of the we doing the business has to change in there. And then uh, even uh, if you uh, feel the Kathmandu and you, yeah, you, you will realize uh, we our uh, all the um, if you want to foreign lifestyle in Kathmandu also expensive, you know. Therefore, I think um, we have to change the this perspective. Saying Nepal is not a cheap but good quality, and the mountain lover all welcome in Nepal with the, all the good uh, perspective. Thank you. I think you put that point across brilliantly. So on that on that final note, I think we're going to have to wrap up um, now. But um, a final word to um, Peter Muir, who is the UIA's president. I know you'd like to say a final word, and I know Nate would like to say a final word as well. Should we go to um, Peter first? Peter, are you still there? Actually, yes, but I think it's actually um, Peter Farkas that was going to speak. Sorry. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, I'll, I'll come in first there. Um, so, uh, yeah, Nathaniel. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, I think just in the end, we all have made mistakes. You know, I, I can't lie. I in part made this film because I wanted to become famous. Am I a foreigner and a Westerner? Yes. Did I record people in a different country? Yes. But just because, you know, we all screw up here and there doesn't mean we can't come together and try to build a better future. You know, our world is not perfect, but I think this is an effort to try and at least solve some issues in one industry. So we'll need all the help we can get. I think that's for sure. So thank you everyone for attending and mountain workers, you know, thank you guys. This is a, uh, hopefully we can help. Peter Farkas. Well, I think the closing words has, uh, have to be the words of thanks. There are many people to thank to the audience actually first and the audience, please don't stop here. Keep keep thinking over and and come up with come up with proposals that we can that we can implement. A big thanks to the work working group who prepared the guidelines. You know it was a impossible impossible deadline. You know almost impossible task and you did it. So I'm really it was a privilege for me to be to lead this group. And uh, I don't know if the thanks is the best word for all the mountain workers, all the porters. You know, because what they do, you know, I think, you know, we, we knew they exist, we knew what they do. But once we have the insight through the video, I think this, this is really touching and, it, we, and we can really understand what's, go, what, what's going on there. So great many thanks to them and also, of course, to Nate, because, you know, I just can't imagine, you know, if anybody else could have come up with such an idea you know, going there, experiment, ex, uh, experiencing it, for, you know, firsthand, and then making a movie, bring it, bring it to the open, and uh, for no, not a single selfish reason. We, you know, it, it, it came through the movie that you want to help, and you know, it's a very nice and clear intention, and we were really we feel privileged and very happy that we could be part of this. Thank you, Peter. So um, to all the, the, the registered, uh, to, to, all the, to everyone who watched, thank you. Um, to all those who registered, um, you will receive a follow-up email after the event with um, links to more information about the Mountain Worker Initiative, also to the fundraising page, and also to the draft guidelines. That will come in the, in the next few days if you've registered. So if you haven't, please do. Um, if you have any specific questions that haven't been answered, they can be addressed to us here at the office. So the email is office at the 
at the UIAA.org and they will be addressed by the working group. Um, a reminder that this is the first webinar in this Mountain Network series. Um, we're going to be covering um, other topics in the coming months from ice climbing to sustainability, safety, um, medical issues. If you have any ideas um, or thoughts on what um, you would like us to cover, please uh, let us know. We would love to hear from you. Um, and for details on the next one, do check into the website and subscribe to our newsletter and we will keep you updated when the next one is. So. Um, that brings to an end uh, this Mountain uh, Series webinar. Thank you for attending. Um, thank you to all our panelists. Goodbye from me and see you next time.